you doing Tri-Valley? So we want to go through some videos on exactly why we uh, prep the fields the way we do to make sure that everybody kind of understands that we do certain things certain ways so that it uh, not only makes the field more playable but it also uh, more importantly is going to be safer for the kids. So a couple of the things first I want to go through kind of the anatomy of the field uh, there's three parts to the field as far as the skin goes. We're going to have the top dressing, which we'll show you some examples of. And then there's the actual base material, which is consistent of uh, silt, clay, and sand. Uh, currently, we are mostly clay. We're kind of a uh, victim of our own doing. Uh, we've put a lot of clay, a lot of prep into these fields. They've been good for a lot of years. Everybody knows that with the wind that we have up here, uh, we're kind of uh, battling that all the time where it's constantly blowing it up and we end up having a lot of lips that are forming. The material we use on the top, uh, the top dressing if you will, is the stuff that smooths out on top and it keeps the, uh, the surface playable. Okay, what happens is as the cleats and everything dig in or if from improper dragging techniques, uh, we end up with peaks and valleys, which causes bad hop. Um, next, we have something that is not used a whole lot, but this is a quick dry material. And we may use this, this is purely clay. And it'll actually help to dry up puddles and things like that. We keep this. Next, we have actual mound clay. Now this is used around home plate. This is used on the pitching mounds. As you can see, when you clump it together, you can actually add moisture at the mound and keep it nice and, and uh, solid. Let's go. There's a reason why we have the green tarps that are on the mound and I would like to start using them on the uh, on home plate as well. And what those, those more importantly aren't necessarily to keep the water off. Uh, they're more to keep the moisture in the clay. Uh, if the clay gets dried out, you'll see a lot of uh, areas where the home plate has, has gotten kind of dug out from cleats. That's from the clay drying out, which can be a safety hazard for sliding and such. All right, so real quick, we're gonna talk about and show an example of what happens over time uh, when the, the fields don't get prepped properly and you end up with uh, bad areas. So if you look down here, you can kind of see it, this low belly right here, okay? This is kind of an extreme example over a large area. What people will tend to do is they drag this top dressing into it. Well, what this does is it creates, you know, you only want about a half inch of this stuff on top. So what it does is now you have potential for the ball to take a bad hop through that. This is the other example that I was talking about here. We have this, this is forming. Okay, this is not only a tripping hazard, uh, but this also can create really bad hops. The, the real reason we want to keep the drag out here is so that we keep from pushing this material up further into the grass. Go through the tools that we use. Uh, this is your basic drag, screen drag, if you will. Um, we want to keep this six to ten inches away from the edge of the grass. The reason being is we end up with a lot of clay that builds up on the grass line and we'll go over more of that later. But this is for the main body of the infield skin. This rake is more for leveling. So this rake you can use to scrape high spots and to level off. It's a little bit wider. Um, so these are mainly used for just trying to uh, get high spots down and keep the field playable. This drag is for the baseline and we'll go over how to use this. The biggest thing to remember about baselines is we don't want to drag anything side to side because that pushes the calcine clay top, top dressing over into the grass, which causes the lips that we're talking about. And this is your basic drag. We use these on the pitching mound. We use these around home plate and in smaller areas. Now there's two types of garden rakes. If we're doing mound prep or if we're trying to get rid of a lip, this T-handle rake has been sharpened it's kind of hard to see, but these teeth have been sharpened. This is more for scratching, kind of dethatching, if you will, and getting the, the buildup out of the edge. This garden rake has a little give to it. This is called a bow rake. So this rake here um, will give a little bit, and it's more for just raking up material and that kind of thing. The next one you'll see us use is the nail drag. This is just for more day-to-day -day kind of dragging. 
Okay, it's got, uh, it's kind of hard to see here, but we have nails. These need to be replaced. We're gonna go them a little longer. Um, but this is just to, we use this probably maybe a dozen times during the season to drag the, the skins. What it does is it digs in and kind of helps break up that top half inch of material and get rid of cleat marks and that kind of stuff that might be causing bad hops, the, the uh, striping tool. Um, so we'll go over more how to use this and how exactly to line the, the field. So we're gonna go over how to set up the field. There's a couple of things to remember when setting the bases. Um, number one, now this is kind of an extreme example, but what happens is if you don't clear out the base anchor, you can end up with this lip. This is a safety hazard for the kids, okay? So in each of the base carts, we have this tool here. And you just put this down in and you just clear it out, okay? Once that's clear enough for this post to go all the way down in, the base should sit flush. And then that eliminates the hazard for the kids. Then the actual base can just pop right on top. So we're gonna go over how to set up home plate, how to get the batter's boxes in place. There's a couple of ways to do this. Um, some people will use a screwdriver on the inside, okay? And just bring it along the inside. That'll get your line, and then you can bring the striping machine over and stripe it. Or you can just walk on it. If you don't wanna get your hands too dirty, okay? And as long as you have the general outline, at this point we can go ahead and stripe this box and then we'll flip it over and repeat the same thing on the other side. All right, so when it comes to the striping machine, this is gonna be your middle mark for the stripe, okay? So you wanna make sure that you use your best judgment. Um, it's not professional fields out here, so we just wanna make sure that we keep, like I said, we keep that line on the inside of the boundary and we'll show an example of that here in a minute. And then when we do the box, now there's this can, this paint can, this way, if you look at this tab, is gonna give you the wide stripe, okay? If you put it in the machine like this, it's gonna give you a little tiny pin stripe, which is not what we want. We want the stripe wide, so put it in the machine so that this is perpendicular to the, uh, to the machine. I'm going to show how to, uh, to string the field and get it ready to stripe. On each of the fields, there's these little eye hooks on the backstop. You hook the string line onto that, and then you run this all the way down past first base into the grass. All right, so now we got our string line strung out to the outfield. Uh, for most field preps, you're just gonna run this line straight down. And if uh, you look at first base there, you want that line right on the outside of first base. Okay, then what we're gonna do is we're just gonna put this little anchor right in here and we're gonna wrap it around. Okay, now we have our, our uh, string line set up and we'll go ahead and stripe. All right, so it's real important, once you get your string line set up, you got your base baseline established, let's go ahead and pull this base out because we wanna make sure that our white paint line is on the inside of that string line so that the white line is always in play. Okay, so now we got our, our paint striper in place. You see where I got the, the pointer is just about an inch, inch and a half in from the string line. You know, make sure that you do that so that we want that line inside the, the baseline. The important thing about the tarp is we wanna make sure, it's got a chain that goes around it. It's pretty heavy. Get someone to help you out. We wanna fold it in thirds, fold it in thirds again, and then take it off the field. So, as we discussed previously, the big reason for having these tarps on here is more to keep the moisture in the clay rather than to keep rain and 
sprinklers from getting on the clay. We have a little bit of a dig out. So the way that you prep that, uh, we like to keep that more for uh, the league to uh, address. If there is a need for it, get someone from Tri-Valley Board and we'll get somebody up here to prep right, so this. Another thing that you can do to make the field more playable is you can water it. Now you have to be very careful. This clay can get very soupy, um, but adding a little bit of water to it, you'll be surprised how much water this, these types of fields can retain, uh, but it does make the field more playable um, by keeping the dust down and it also keeps the clay together, keeps it from getting blown around. Okay, so if you want to water the fields, obviously we got a lot of wind. It's going to take quite a bit of water to get some good moisture in there. We do have the facilities on both fields to be able to do that. You want to grab one of the hose reels out of the shed. There's this little quick coupling. Once you just open that up, this goes straight in. You'll see there's a little nipple on that. You want to align that and then turn it all the way around until you get water. Now the key with watering is you just want to make sure you don't have it on any kind of a straight stream or let it dig in. You just want to kind of let the water rain down on the field to get moisture into the clay. All right, so the last thing I want to address as far as field prep goes prior to the game, if you show up and for some reason uh, the field is not in good playable shape and you need to go ahead and get it prepped for play, then please refer to the video that we're going to do for post-game field maintenance. All right, one of the first things you want to do post-game is you need to get all the base anchors and the bases pulled, okay? That's You can pop this off. Some, you don't have to. It makes it a little bit easier. Get your fingers underneath, just wiggle it, pull that out. And then there should be base plugs on the carts. Uh, prior to the game, when these get pulled out, they usually get left on the carts. So these plugs go in. And this just keeps from filling up the base anchor with material. All right, so one of the first things we're going to address with uh, post-game field prep is you'll notice the baseline. And if you get a good look down the baseline, there's kind of a belly in it. And what, what forms this is a lot of people, they go through and they start raking the baseline like this. Okay, and what that does is that ends up pushing a lot of material up into the lip. Okay, so the proper way to do it would be to have someone go through and rake all this stuff into the middle. Okay, then you could go down the middle and rake it to keep it, to smooth it out. Just like within the baselines, big deal with this garden rake is to have someone go around all of the grass line and rake this calcined clay, this top dressing, back into the field. That way when you drag it, it stays on the field and out of the grass, which is what forms this lip here. All right, so now we're gonna talk about dragging the main body of the, the infield. So you wanna take, keep the edge of this eight to 10 inches away from the grass line. That keeps from pushing that calcined clay and the top dressing up into the grass. The other thing that's real important to remember is that you wanna end with this wherever you began. Okay. Ideally, you want to start in a different spot all the time. But the big thing to remember is wherever you start with this, end with this. And never drag this onto the grass. You're going to carry a lot of material with you. All right, so another thing you want to make sure is if you look at the drag, you want to make sure that bar is staying on the ground. If you let it bounce, you're going to end up with waves in the material, which again is a safety hazard, bad hops, and it doesn't keep uniformity to the, to the infield skin. All right. We end where we started. That's going to help keep uniformity to the infield and it's going to keep from building up areas, low areas, high areas, and end up with bellies.
really what we're trying to do with this is to make sure we're raking this material out of the grass and keeping it inside the baseline. All right, so you'll probably notice a common theme. Again, when it comes to prepping home bait, base, any of the baselines or the infield skin, the name of the game is to make sure we're keeping this clay material out of the grass. It does create a, a serious safety hazard over time and we want to avoid that. So with everyone's help, hopefully we can uh, keep these fields playable and keep all the kids safe for years to come. So now that we got the, all the clay raked away from the grass line, we can use any of these tools really to prep home, home plate. Uh, I prefer to use the bigger drag. Home plate's big enough that you can do that easily. You can also just use a rake or you can use the baseline drag. One of the key things here, just like in the infield skin, you want to be careful not to push the material into the grass and you also want to end where you started. the areas that often gets forgotten about is the area out of, pay, out of play behind home plate. These dirt areas here, um, you know, the catcher is going to be fielding foul balls in this area. It can be very dangerous if we let lips and things to form back here. So equally, just as important as it is in the baseline, we want to make sure we do the same thing with these areas of dirt behind the, the uh, home plate. All right, so last but definitely not least, we need to make sure we keep these dugouts cleared out. We get a lot of wind out here like we've talked about before. Anybody that's played here knows this. We want to keep these swept out, keep the grounds clear, throw any garbage away, clear all the boxes out, and if a trash can's full, take it out. Um, we do have a big uh, blue trash can at the entrance to the park. If we could get somebody to dump that when it gets full, that'd be great. So as you can see, there's a lot of moving parts to the field prep, breakdown, and maintenance of the fields. Cordelia Tri-Valley, we're a 100% volunteer organization. This is parents, kids, family members that are out here uh, helping keep these fields good. With everyone's help, if everyone can get together uh, post-game, make sure the fields are prepped so that they're nice and ready for the next game, uh, everyone wins. Thanks.